I'm Batman. Jeez, I can't see without my glasses. Yeah. Nah, just doesn't work with the glasses, does it? Hey guys, welcome back. So, as you probably guessed, we are going to do something Batman related today. And no, it's not the mask. That's not 3D printed. Um, I bought that a couple years ago. But what I am actually going to be 3D printing today is a Batarang. And my all-time favorite Batarang has to be from the Arkham City video game. I'll put a picture right up here. So that's the one we'll be making today. And actually, that's a pretty simple design, so I figured, why not make it too? So, boom, we will also be making the um, Batarang from Batman Beyond, the cartoon. So let's get into it. All right, guys, quickly before we get into the print settings, I created both of these models in Fusion 360. If you'd like to see more about that, I will be posting a separate video um, sort of speeding up the whole CAD process for this, me talking a little bit about everything that went into this. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I designed this at all, make sure you click that up in the eye up here. Here we are in Cura, and th these are all the files for the Arkham City Batarang. Um, and you will need supports for this, just for the overhang on this blade, but that's a, I think that's the only thing you'll need supports for. Other than that, pretty usual settings. Um, I actually printed these at 0.3 millimeters, but um, if you want to get the best resolution on the blade here, you can go up to 0.1 and 20% infill. Um, you don't need more than that. I wouldn't go down to 10 just because these blades um, don't print very well at 10% unless you increase the shell thickness, so whatever you want to do there. Okay, and then here we have the um, Batman Beyond Batarang. And this one's quite a bit quicker, and it's all in one piece, so there's no assembly required. In this one, I would print at a 0.1 millimeter layer height, um, just because the, the top part here is going to look so much better at a 0.1. Also, you will not need any support material for this one. Well, there you have it, so let's get printing. Okay, so our prints have finished. First up is the Batman Beyond Batarang. And now the next one is the Arkham City Batarang. And that is the um, top for it. And then this is the blade. And then it is beveled on both sides, so I had to use support material, but it turned out really nice. And then I already test fitted this one, so this is the other blade. And then this is the back piece with the three pegs and the little stopper there. Now when you're putting this together, make sure the stopper is towards the bottom, and then um, just slide the blades onto these little pegs. And they'll be pretty tight, so give it a little bit of a push here. It should snap on, and then it should move pretty freely. And as you can see, the top has three little holes in there, and just line those up with the pegs, and you'll be good to go. And that will just snap on as well. So now I think it's time to hand these off to my wife for painting. Okay, let's take a closer look at these. So first up, here is the Batman Beyond Batarang. And then this is the Arkham Knight Batarang. And this one is particularly cool because it folds up. How sweet is that? All right, so let's talk about the post-processing that my wife did to get these the way that you see them. The first thing she did was she sanded them. Um, nothing major, just made sure that all of the defects were off and these blades were um, a little smoother than they came off the printer. Um, but you don't need to go crazy there. And then step two was to prime it. Now she just used normal white uh, priming spray paint and you just kind of sweep it across until you have a nice even coat and if you put multiple coats on make sure you let it dry completely in between coats and then after it's fully primed step three is to paint it now the um, the first part of the painting is the black since they're both predominantly black just use some black spray paint and then use the same technique for the primer here and just try to get as nice of a finish as you can and the second part of painting this is to put on the extra colors. So for this one, she used a chrome for the sides here, and that's why it's shiny like you see. And then for this middle bat here, she used a, we actually have a paint pen that is that silver color, so that worked out real nice. And as you can see in this little video, she blocked off the black part with Play-Doh. 
Um, and you can use tape or whatever you want to block that off. Just make sure it's not going to take off the paint that you already put on there. So just block that off and then apply the paint. Same thing for this one. Just instead of the chrome, she used a darker red color. And it came out really nice. And that's pretty much it for the post-processing. The only thing left to do after that is to assemble this guy right here, which is pretty easy. You can see there's pegs in there, so just pop the wings onto the back piece here. And then um, this top piece should uh, press fit right on top of it, but you might need to apply a little bit of super glue to get it to hold there. Um, there's holes underneath here, so just apply the glue in there and then make sure you don't accidentally glue the um, blades in place because that's not what you want. And then you're all set to go. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this project. I know I had a lot of fun making it. As always, the links are down in the description to these files, and also I have put the Fusion 360 file down there in case you have Fusion 360 and want to mess around with these. Well, if you guys are wondering what to watch next, check the I up in the corner there, or if you're on a mobile device, I think the I is below the video. And then make sure you like this video if you thought it was cool, and then get subscribed. I make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then that's it for me, guys. Thanks for joining me.